I'm sure many of you have done this. <laughs> I'm walking around my garden this morning with a load of vegetables tucked into the bottom of my shirt because I decided that I did not need to bring a basket over here, that I was just going to walk over here and check stuff and, um, you know, didn't need to bring anything. And now I've got peppers, tomato, I've got cucumbers, oh my goodness. I've got all kind of stuff in my shirt. So now I have to go back to the house, even though I don't really want to, because I need to get rid of this. It's kind of like when you go in the grocery store and you say you just need milk so you don't get a buggy. And then you walk out of there with all these things in your arm, you can't barely get to the checkout. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Well, this is a beautiful sight. Over here in Richard's garden, I had planted a bunch of Ford Hook Jim cantaloupes. Now they're a cantaloupe that has a green flesh when you cut it open, but it's a cantaloupe taste. They're not a honeydew melon. They are a cantaloupe, but they're an heirloom variety. And I really, really wanted to grow them. But these were part of those plants that I just about lost because of just, I guess, lack of food they were getting because I was not able to pay attention to everything at first. But here they are. I've got some melons on them. I'm sure if I walk around, I'll see a few more. But it makes me so happy. I, I, I'm going to do everything I can to get these to grow because I really want to try them. Hope it's okay if I just talk while I walk. I'm going to walk across this beach back up to my house. I'm taking all this stuff back to the house. But last night, right before dark, I was over at that garden and I found a hornworm infestation just going on on my tomatoes and my peppers over there. Now I only have one variety of tomato over there. It's called the Atkinson. It was developed years ago for hot weather climates and it's been growing great. Those are the ones that I show that just have clusters and clusters of tomatoes on those plants and some of them just kind of look beautiful like apples and everything. Well, I've been watching because I've been on hornworm duty here for a while and they seem to be doing okay. Nothing was bothering them over there. But what happened, I think, if I can think like a hornworm for a second. <laughs> okay, I harvested my potatoes a um, week and a half or so ago and I had started having a problem with my potatoes having hornworms on them. I had gotten some and I had been diligent and going over there and, you know, checking them and everything. But I could tell right around the time that everything needed to be harvested that those hornworms were back on my potatoes. But I decided I'm not gonna just hunt them down like crazy. I'm just gonna harvest because it was time to harvest. So that's what I did. And I think what they did is after I harvested my potatoes, they just kind of moseyed on, went on vacation two or three rows over and found my tomato plants. So that's why all of a sudden they are attacking my tomato plants and, and my peppers. And so last night, just in the course of just a few minutes, right before it got dark and right before a horse fly just basically drove me out of the garden. Those horse flies are terrible at night. And I had one that was just dive bombing me the whole time I was looking at, for hornworms. So I found three and I walked them straight to the pond and threw them out there, let the fish have them. But there could be more because, you know, they were in my potatoes pretty good. So anyway, I'm keeping an eye on them. I walked straight back over there this morning to check it out and just, you know, see if I saw anything. I don't. I don't really see any more new damage. Maybe those three were all it was, but I doubt it. You kind of figure that if there was some way we could have like, you could just stand there and say, you know, God, <laughs> every hornworm out here, can you please let like a little red beeping light go off on it so I'll know and I can go get it. Well, if those red beeping lights actually went off, we would probably freak out. We would probably freak out with how many hornworms are out there going after our plants. I'm just curious, does anybody else's window seals look like mine right now? I've got your early girl tomatoes. I've got some Jimmy Nardello peppers, some Marglobe tomatoes. I've got your Rogue Mountain Tommy Toe tomatoes. Cherokee purple, some of which I'm just trying to save from everything that seems to be attacking them. I don't know how many great ones I'm gonna get out of there, but I'm just trying. I've got your VB Russian 
just one tomato. That's the only one for that one right now. It's a large paste tomato, but it's just beautiful. I've got your Atkinson tomatoes. Those are the ones over there in Richard's garden that last night started being attacked by hornworms. And then I've got my Italian heirloom tomatoes. My counter doesn't look much better. That's a, a bottom of the basket is full of just miscellaneous variety cherry tomatoes that I picked last night. Same deal here, except these are all Mexico midget tomatoes. My friend brought me some beautiful basil out of her little kitchen garden the other day. I'm waiting on it to kind of root so that I can plant it. Any tips on that I'd appreciate because I've never really planted something like that from a root. I've got dragon's egg cucumbers. These are so little, but they're so good. I just love eating these. You don't have to peel them or anything. You just can wash them, tip the ends off, and just do whatever you want with them. They're great. Here's some pickling cucumbers, national pickling cucumbers I picked yesterday. A couple of them, I guess, had been sitting out there a little bit without me realizing it. I've got a, a gray zucchini here, and then these are cocozel zucchinis. So grabbed a few of those. I've harvested a gazillion Cubanelle peppers. These have done wonderful. I don't know if you've ever tried to grow them, but I would suggest it because they just seem to thrive. They're doing wonderful. And what I did was um, I cut them in half, de-seeded them the other night, and then I took one pound of Jimmy Dean sausage, browned it in a pan, and drained it, and then I just uh, smashed it together with a fork with two things of softened cream cheese and just made a cream cheese and Jimmy Dean sausage stuffing. I stuffed it on these half pieces of my cumanel peppers and baked them in the oven about, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes at 350, and they were really good. I've still got some. I've been heating up for lunch and everything. I know from here to here, these are long green improved. These down here are my slicers and bayet alphas. I'm thinking, I'm thinking these are the slicers. I'm thinking these are the bayet alphas but um, I didn't really verify that yet. Um, I asked on my video the other night if anybody could help me verify which one's the Bayet Alpha, I would appreciate it. But I hadn't heard from anybody yet, but I'm thinking this is it just based on pictures I saw on the internet. But those pictures don't always look exactly like this either. So who knows? And I forgot my squash. I'm getting a whole bunch of yellow crookneck squash. So I've just really been harvesting a lot of things. I'm very happy. I'm not going to lie, I've kind of completely lost control of my little cottage garden here. The reason is everything's growing great. Everything's thriving. My sunflowers are growing tall. They're busting out right now with sunflowers. They're looking good. My pole beans are growing. I'm pretty much just growing those for seed. Those pole beans right there are the 1,500-year-old cave beans. And I only started with a few seeds, so I'm really just letting the pods dry out. I'm harvesting them, and on my counter in there, I'm saving seeds. The same thing with the Mary's Meat pole beans that are against the brick wall back there. I've been walking out here. See how the pods, when they get a little yellow and start drying up? I've been waiting until that point, grabbing those pods, and then bringing them into my house. and saving the seeds. So I've got other pods down there that are big and full, but they're still pretty green. I'm gonna give them just a couple more days and then harvest those too. These green dragon cucumbers that are an Asian cucumber I planted in this bucket have spread and done well. They've done, I mean, well, the plant has spread. I probably need to put a little bit of nutrients in here because they're starting to get a little yellow. However, just when I walked up and was filming this, I found my first cucumber in here. So I'm gonna see how these do. This is more of a novelty just for me up near my house. But you know, if they're delicious, I'll grow them again. I'll try them again. Some of my beans in here look hideous, but I'm leaving them. I really wanna jerk them out of here because they're ugly but these are the red swan beans that I planted from Baker Creek and I've harvested a bunch of them. But these pods that are hanging there, they're hanging there. I'm letting those dry up so I can save these heirloom seeds. 
I have that. This may not be the best example of a pod there, but you see what I mean. I'm leaving these plants here, even though the leaves are brown and they just look hideous. Um, but I really want to save the seeds from those pods. There's a bunch of them right there on this plant. But they're not ready to harvest the seeds yet, so I just have to be patient and just let everything be kind of ugly and leave them there. Okay, I'm heading down to my lower garden after leaving my house, dropping off all that food, and then I got distracted by my little cottage garden as I walked past it. But I'm heading down to my lower garden because back to the old hornworm issue, last night when I was out here harvesting all the cherry tomatoes, I realized that the hornworms were again attacking these bushes. I had kind of thought I eliminated the threat, but they were back and they were really hitting my Eagleheart yellow cherry tomatoes and the sun sugars. So I actually got six hornworms off of just these bushes last night. I was so happy I was able to find that many that quick. I took them all down to the lake, threw them in there and eliminated those but I just don't have the confidence that that's all there were. So I'm walking back down here this morning, a little bit different light, a little brighter light, and I'm just gonna see if I see anything on here this morning. But let me show you the damage that they've done. They can do so much damage so quick, and it's so disheartening. This is my Eagleheart yellow cherry tomatoes. Now, this is just one bush out of, I think five that I have that they really set upon. But you see how quick, how quick they can do damage. Now I just walked up and I'm filming this. I'm hoping there's not just a worm sitting right here looking at me that y'all can all see. Or if there is, I hope I find it. Okay, and they did the same thing to my Rogue Mountain Tommy Toe bush down here, except they did it a little bit on about um, two different bushes over here but not only do they eat your leaves they love to munch on half of your tomatoes not the whole tomato if they eat a whole tomato I'm not realizing it but they'll take half of a tomato and chew half the side off and then go to another one and chew half of that side off and then go to another one and chew half of that side off here's a tomato that got eaten on right here a little chunk chunked out of it right there you're not only losing your plant growth your plant leaves but they're just taking a little hunk out of your tomato and then going to the next tomato that's what's so frustrating with these hornworms i took a couple of pictures yesterday of the ones that i plucked off of there before i put them in the lake look at this Okay, I walked over here just this morning to these Paul Robeson tomatoes. I love these tomato bushes and they have been perfectly healthy and I've been watching them to make sure no hornworms were getting at them. But look what I find this morning. They're eating my leaves off and you see what they do? They'll take part of your tomato off. I'm on the other side of the plant right now. See, that's my limbs that got hit. But also I can tell they've been on little limbs up in there. And when it's just a little damage like that, that tells you that that little worm is still around because they don't really leave until they annihilate your plant. If they do, they're just really going to the plant next door usually. So this is this is one plant right here and it's got the most damage. That limb goes to this bush. So I'm telling you that that worm has transferred to this bush. I'm gonna cut my camera off and see if I can find it. And I will cut it back on if I do. I hope that I do. I'll be honest with you, I got me a bucket I've been sitting on it in front of these Paul Robeson tomatoes and I just cannot find the worm. Now they're right next door, right there on the Eagleheart yellows that have been just tore up by hornworms. I found three on there yesterday. The worm could have just went over there and that's what I caught yesterday 
or it could still be here and I'm not seeing it. The only thing is I'm not seeing tons of feces on the ground over here, which is a telltale sign. I'm just not seeing it on, on this, even though this plant right here is ate up, I'm still not seeing much down there, which almost tells me maybe it moved on just for, for some reason, but I will come back. I will not give up. I'm not gonna let it eat my whole Paul Robeson plant. I'll check it again this evening and see what I can find. Okay, I just checked my sun sugars and they were fine. And then I realized when I got down here to my yellow pear, that that was the bush that I had trouble with yesterday. So apparently the hornworms were all about my yellow tomatoes, my agar heart yellows and my yellow pears. So I looked and I could see all of this fresh feces. Hate to say all that y'all, but that's what you look for. So I knew it was here. Okay, so I finally found it. There he is. He's been out here munching all day on my tomatoes and he's fixing to go to the pond and become fish food when you see all that feces on the ground you know you're you're over the target or they're over the target i guess i should say but you know they're in the branches above it and i found him so take care of that hornworm on to the next one i guess i go ahead and just grab things you know when they're first turning like this i've said it before but the very reason is because of those hornworms and things uh, I can't afford to wait until they get a little more red, uh, maybe a little more marketable because people, I'll be honest with you, people want red tomatoes. They want them, they want fresh tomatoes, they want homegrown tomatoes, but they want them to look a lot like they are at the grocery store. <laughs> that has been something I've kind of discovered in selling things is they still kind of want to just get a red tomato. If I wait till that perfect marketable red tomato is ready, I'm going to lose it. There's just too much attacking these tomatoes. I'm not growing in a hot house. I'm not growing in a greenhouse. I'm not growing in a climate controlled environment. I wish I had all that. Uh, I started to do that this year and I had to kind of abandon those plans. Um, but if I waited on all that, I would lose my fruit. But let me show you what this plant looks like. I just showed it to you on my very last video this Italian heirloom tomato plant that was attacked by hornworms. Um, let me show you what it looks like now. It's done, it's gone. It's already turned brown. It's just done. I mean, when I discovered it, it was too late to find the hornworm on the plant. It had already done its damage. And I feel like I've, I've failed on a lot of things in this garden, but trying to notice hornworm damage and jump on it, I've tried to do that a lot and I still miss this plant and I still lost it. So that's a tomato plant. It's not gonna give me any tomatoes to sell or to eat. So that's why I'm being so diligent with these and so vigilant. But I encourage everybody to look up hornworms, study them, get to know them, become like a hornworm whisperer. Because if you have problems with them in your area, and most everybody does, you're gonna lose valuable, valuable harvest to those things. And I just hate that for you. I hate it for myself doing the best I can. I will keep the fight going. This is Lainey from Camp Joy Farms. Y'all have a great day and happy gardening. Bye-bye.